This is the most expensive filament dryer I've ever seen. It costs more than some 3D printers. So naturally, I had one big question. What makes this thing worth over $350? This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I expected a heated box with a timer and a fan, but what I got was a little more interesting. Because this isn't just a dryer, it does things that cheaper machines can't. Actually, two things. At first glance, it's not massively different from other dryers. It's got a plastic shell, a touch screen, feed ports on the side, but start digging and it gets more serious. The E2 can reach 110 degrees C. That's well above what most dryers offer and enough to properly dry filaments like nylon, PC or CF blends. It's got a 500 watt ceramic heating element. It gets to 50 degrees in 20 minutes and 70 degrees in 30. That means less waiting around for things to happen. It holds two two kilo spools or one massive three kilogram reel. You could run a whole multi-day print job from inside this thing. It's got filament feed throughs on three sides, the top, the left and the right, all with PTFE tubes included. This means you can dry whilst printing from almost any angle. Its touchscreen interface is a bright 95 by 55 mil display, which lets you control time, temperature, presets, and toggle between different modes, including drying and annealing modes. That's right, the E2 can anneal prints, but more on that soon. Still, it's a lot of money, and if all you print is PLA, this might seem absurd. Before we get into how it compares to cheaper models like the S4, let me quickly thank our sponsor who helped make videos like this possible. Now, do you need help refining your electronics or mechanical design? PCBWay's expert engineers offer schematic capture, PCB layout, and mechanical enclosure design, all optimized for manufacturing. And when you're ready to build, they provide PCB prototyping, assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, and sheet metal fabrication to bring your product to life. Whether you're a hobbyist scaling up or an engineer getting ready for production, PCBWay has the tools to help you build smarter. Check them out at PCBWay.com. All right, so how does the E2 stack up against cheaper multi-spool dryers? Let's take a look. For example, here is the Sunlu S4, four spool capacity, a third of the price, same brand. The S4 tops out at 70 degrees, which is fine for PLA, PTG, and ABS at a push. It's quiet, roomy, and efficient. So why does the E2 cost more than double? Well, the difference is in what you're drying and why. There are two reasons why someone might pay this much for a filament dryer. And if either one applies to you, this machine might be a smart investment. Let's start with nylon. It prints beautifully when it's dry, but leave it on your shelf overnight and it becomes a moisture magnet. This is what wet nylon looks like. Fuzzy edges, bubbles, and a part that will fall apart under stress. The exact same filament dried for six hours in the E2 at 80 degrees C, and the difference is obvious. Not just visually, but structurally. And this matters. Nylon, PC, CF filaments, they're not cheap. A failed print can waste 10 to $20 in material alone. Add in your wasted time and it can really sting. Lower end filament dryers and food dehydrators just don't get hot enough to dry these properly. You're not baking a cake, you're reversing a chemical bond. Now, here's something I didn't expect. This dryer can actually anneal some of your prints. Some 3D printer filament, like PLA, is semi-crystalline. When it cools quickly, like when you print with it, its polymer chains are frozen in a disordered, tangled state, which makes it brittle and also makes it less resistant to heat. But if you reheat it slowly to just below its melting point, these polymer chains rearrange into more ordered crystalline regions. If you then also let it cool slowly, the structure stabilizes, locking in improved properties. That's what annealing does, and the E2 is built for it. These two prints were printed at the same time with the same Sunlu PLA filament. After a quick boiling water bath, it's clear to see what the annealing has done. The untreated part warped, but the one annealed in the E2 stayed stable. Same material, different result. Yes, annealing can cause some dimensional changes, but if you're designing for strength or high temperature environments, it's worth it. Nylon is also a good candidate for annealing and the E2's annealing max temperature of 110 degrees means that it can anneal many engineering filaments from Sunlu's new range specifically designed for stronger, more engineering focused jobs. 
So who is this machine for? If you want to print with NEF Sunlu's engineering range of filaments, including nylon, PC, CF, or TPU regularly, or if you want to anneal your functional parts for stress resistance or heat stability, this dryer gives you real control over your material. But if you only print PLA dragons and other decorative items, you might never use the features that make this dryer worth the price. So yes, the E2 is expensive, but it's also the first dryer I've tested that feels like a professional tool, not just a plastic box with heat. If you're trying to get more reliability from high-end filaments or level up the performance of your prints with annealing, the E2 actually makes a compelling case. Links to the E2 and cheaper alternatives are down in the description. Let me know what you're printing and whether a dryer like this fits into your workflow. If you want to know more about the Sunlu S4 that I mentioned earlier, then check out this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.